In this tutorial, we are going to see step-by-step -step guide on how to do qualitative data analysis of interviews, focus groups, and open-ended questionnaire-based data fast using Atlas TI 2024 and vivo 14. So the outline is as follows. As you know, there are two uh, major approaches to uh, qualitative data coding. We have inductive coding that consists of uh, manual coding, initial coding, open coding, semantic coding, our explicit coding. So we simply read and attach labels to the chunks of text according to the uh, speaker's meaning. And we have also latent coding or implicit coding in which we just see what is beyond the intended meaning conveyed in the text or the transcripts. Then we have in vivo coding where the same chunks of the uh, text or the words of the uh, participant or interviewer uh, become, let's say, the uh, main code and the axial coding here is just about the relationship between codes and then we have selective coding when we just refine the codes and we start developing initial categories and developing categories into initial themes and revising and naming and defining themes and uh, coming up with final themes and reports using Browns and Clark's uh, approach of thematic analysis or reflexive thematic analysis. Then we have categories and then themes, sometimes we call the quotes and codes first order, uh, let's say coding and the themes or and the categories and themes, we call them second order uh, coding. So these are just different uh, uh, names. So this is the first approach with regard to inductive coding. The inductive coding on the other hand, consists of manual coding, where you just read again and you can just color code or highlight, etc. So uh, the other one is the code book development approach. So here you have a code book with specific codes that uh, are based on a specific theory or framework. And here we try to code the data according to the code book that you develop before uh, reading the data and coding it. Then we have code groups or aggregate codes. So here we can just uh, put the groups together to answer research questions. So we can just put research questions on the top level and under each one, we put the codes that correspond to them. So this is what we call code groups or aggregate codes. We also have document groups. If we want to compare, let's say, different participants based on age, gender, professional status, country, etc., etc. So then we have categories and then we have themes. This is for deductive coding, which is mostly called the code book approach as well, uh, which is called also theory driven coding, whereas inductive coding is called data driven coding. So these are the two major approaches that you should understand before delving into the process of uh, the qualitative data analysis. So the last one is creating coding frames based on theories and connecting uh, predetermined codes to uh, and themes to relevant, let's say, excerpts in the data and assigning those codes, themes to excerpts uh, and extracting uh, information from the data. So thematic analysis, which is the focus of this video and reflexive thematic analysis by Brown and Clark consists of six phases that you should understand. And this article was in 2006, so there were some revisions made earlier uh, in 2019, 2020. So here we have familiarization with the data. This means just you take the excerpts, you read them, you reread them to understand the patterns. Then you generate the initial codes based on your reading. And sometimes uh, you could just come up with a lot of codes and you could also use AI coding or intentional AI codings using uh, Atlas TI. And this is what we are going to see based on your research questions, objectives or aim, etc. Then we search for themes uh, after just taking the codes, grouping them together, we start forming themes and we review themes. And so we define them, we give them names, we review them and then uh, this is like defining and naming them. This is like the fifth phase and uh, writing the reports or the summary uh, tables and figures. This is like the sixth step. So it's an iterative process to some extent. We can consider it a linear because we could just start with one phase and move on in a sequential order. And then we have qualitative research approaches and methods in which we have different uh, approaches like thematic analysis, TA, reflexive thematic analysis, RTA, uh, the GOA methodology that is used especially in business entrepreneurial studies, which is quite the same 
to thematic analysis, but it just uses a model at the end with the first order codes, quotes, and the second order categories, themes, uh, etc. that answer research question uh, or research questions. Then we have phenomenology or what we call interpretive phenomenological analysis, IPA. Then we have qualitative content analysis, QCA. Then we have grounded theory by Charmas using constant comparison, etc. Then we have the Q, uh, the uppercase Q methodology and the Q methodology, the lowercase. So the, the uppercase means that you use in your research approach, qualitative research as the main approach within what we call interpretivism, whereas the small Q here, we talk about mixed method research where we use both quantitative and qualitative. That's why we have a lowercase Q methodology. To continue other qualitative research approaches and methods, we have critical theory, then we have ethnography, uh, which studies the perception, the belief, the action, and the practices. Then we have also knit no graphy which studies the uh, behavior in uh, the net which is the uh, international uh, network or the internet uh, so then we have discourse analysis which studies the linguistic features of speech or any discourse to unveil the uh, ideologies and the implicit and explicit meanings that are being conveyed and then we have sentiment analysis that groups the data into uh, and negative sentiments, positive sentiments, and neutral sentiments, and it is used to analyze usually twi Twitter data or X data or other types of data to see the sentiment of people towards a certain issue. Then we have case study analysis that delves into the study of specific case to see the in-depth of it. Uh, then we have comparative analysis that is uh, usually run using document groups to compare different let's say uh interviewees or participants or documents based on certain uh specific let's say characteristics like demographic characteristics or other uh, criteria then we have gap analysis to study what is lacking in a certain area or content gap analysis then we have framework analysis that is pretty much similar to thematic analysis but it is just systematic and it has this uh, procedure of coming up with a theory or a framework to analyze a certain set of data. Then we have template analysis, which is usually used in applied policy research, and it is characterized by transparency and accountability in terms of the data analysis procedures. Uh, then we have summary tables and figures that we can generate using the explore uh, function on NVivo 14 or the network function on Atlas TI, be it the web version or the desktop version. So amongst the common summary tables and figures, we have word clouds and uh, word frequencies. Then we have regular charts to see the like bar charts, uh, pie charts, etc. Then we have hierarchy uh, charts. Uh, then we have tables. Then we have project maps. Then we have mind maps. Then we have concept maps. Then we have comparison diagrams and the matrix coding query tables that match the codes with the participants or with the uh, quotes etc and then we have network diagrams uh, code document tables uh, code co-occurrence table and sankey diagrams or code documents so this sankey diagram matches the codes with the documents for comparison reasons for now we are going to see a practical example of uh, analyzing an open-ended qualitative question so stay tuned for the upcoming videos and see you soon